You're welcome to 3FM and TV3's First Take. My name is Jifa Bampu, and today we are the offices of the Ghana Revenue Authority to speak to the GRA Commissioner General, Reverend Amishadai Owusu Amwa. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you also very much, and glad to be on your program. All right, thank um, you. So um, we're here to talk a bit about how the GRA is doing um, when, you know, not normal times these days. And part of the job the GRA has is to mobilize revenue. So when I looked at some of the figures, um, looking at figures from 2017 till date, revenue mobilization has been lots of big figures. In 2017, it was 32 billion, 2018, 37, 2019, 42 billion, 2020, 45 billion. For 2021, the target is 60 billion. That seems very ambitious, isn't it? Yes, uh, it is ambitious. Uh, I think that, as you have said, over the years, we have been growing the revenue um, from one level to another. And there are a number of areas that we believe that we can do more compliance, uh, digitalization, and things like that to be able to improve the revenue. And therefore, last year, we were expecting that we have done about 47 initially. Um, then based on COVID, it was um, reduced to 42, but we were able to exceed the 42 and did 45. Um, it's so from 45 to 60, it's very, very yes, ambitious. Yes, that's almost, what? About 32%. 32 percent. Uh, and if you look at the average growth over the years, um, we do an average growth of around 20, 25%. If you look at the figures that you mentioned from 2017 Till coming out there. So, the reason why we are looking at such a significant um, growth is that, one, if you look at our current um, tax to GDP ratio, it's still uh, a bit low, around 13%, and therefore we want to increase significantly. And then for us to use to increase significantly, there are a number of areas that we have identified. And then somebody also asks, why are you doing it in the COVID era? Yes, we'll come to, to <laughs> revenue mobilization and era of COVID, but which key areas do you think will enable the GRA achieve this 60 billion revenue target? Uh, it, this is a combination of um, um, factors or combinations areas and tax types and then um, uh, strategies. I'll start with the strategies. Um, we, we assure that digitalization is key for us to be able to grow the revenue significantly the way we will. I'm sure I'll give you later on details. We are sure that um, compliance is also um, very key. I think that um, there are a number of areas that people have not been as compliant as they ought to be. And this year, one of our major focuses our areas we are going to do is to ensure that people become compliant. Right. And then number three, um, enforcement. Uh, I think that there are a number of areas that we do have debts. Um, and then also we know you have talked about leakages and things like that. So there are areas like the petroleum sector, um, the oil marketing uh, guys, both if you are looking at both the upstream and downstream. There are areas like the mining um, sector. Uh, there are areas like the uh, telecom sector. Um, all these areas, there are avenues for us to be able to uh, get more um, revenue. So our uh, aim is that for these areas, and even for individuals, as you have said, if you talk of the high net worth individuals, uh, maybe I don't know whether I should include you or... <laughs> 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 but if you talk of the high net wealth individuals, uh, there are a number of them. And you'll be surprised as to the level of compliance that you get from some of these people who display a lot of affluence on um, social media. And all these are areas that we are going to... Um, in fact, we know that we, are, we have start, started, we are putting the structures. We are going to be sure that there's a three-year takeoff. And that is why we are confident that our target this year should be that um, significant. So I've mentioned the three things I talked about. Yes. The, the compliance. The areas. And the, then the, the, task, types, the, task, the types, task types. You and the task types. You didn't mention um, You know, what we're talking about the task types, we are talking about, like, let's say, the POI, which is the ones that you and I, who are employees, do pay. Um, there are areas that we know that, for example, you find that somebody... Let's say a company sends his um, employee data to SNIT. And then you find out that he has more people on their SNIT database every month than he has on the, uh, the GRA. GRA database. So it's about synchronizing the data. Exactly. So then we make sure that more of the uh, individuals are paying their PAYE. And then we come to areas like the corporate income tax. 
which is paid by the various um, uh, institutions and, I mean, corporate bodies. And there around, you'll find that there are a lot of areas that people have gaps. When I say gaps, let's say, for example, there are some tr certain transactions, like we take transfer pricing. When I say transfer pricing, the company is here, he has a mother company um, outside. Abroad. And then, at the end of the day, he has a lot of expenditures which are not really expenditure, but then the money ends up being transferred. So at the end of the day, the bottom line becomes Looks small. Lower. And yeah. then the corporate income tax that you get also it's becomes also smaller. small. So these are also areas that the corporate income tax, as I said, the tax types, we'll be looking at them. Tax type, another one we can talk about is the uh, SIS duties, which is one that we impose through the tax stamp that we affix on the various... Um, Consumable products. Very good. And so that one too, we, have to, we are going to do more compliance and making sure that people are really affixing the, um, uh, the, the stamp on the products. In all of these things you mentioned, one key area that a lot of people keep pointing to, but it seems the GRA doesn't do much about, is the property uh, tax. How can you make this work? Okay, the, the distinction between the, uh, there's a little bit of distinction. When you talk about the property, there is a property tax, mm -hmm. then there is also the rent tax. Mm -hmm. Now the property tax is done by the... Um, Assemblies. Yes. Now, where, the one that, which we have done some sort of collaboration with them and provided some support to them to be able to help them to collect those taxes. Because at the end of the day, it's for the total revenue of the country. Now, when it comes to the one that falls directly in our um, area, that is the rent tax for the properties. And you are right in saying that in the past, we have not done as deeply as we ought to do. But uh, I can assure you that that's also one of the areas when I talk about the Enforcement. The compliance and yes, enforcement. Yes, enforcement. That's the area that this year, if you have a property, uh, and, or anybody who has a property, he should expect that he will definitely will have to pay. Rent. So as for rent, as soon as you own the property, whether it is freehold or leasehold, and you have rented it out and have received income for the rent, you have to pay the tax. Okay. And so what we have done is that we have done some collaboration and we got a lot of support from the um, GIZ, the Ghana General International Corporation. And we have actually created, um, and that also goes into using the digital environment. We have created a platform that shows for, in fact, we've done it for most of the municipalities. And so with that sort of thing that we have done, we can actually go onto the map using the Google map and can identify every property in the city. And it is such that we, have, we are deploying a lot of the uh, NAPCO personnel and we are making sure that each of the properties, we know whether it is owner-occupied or uh, rented. Rent. And so if it's owner-occupied, then you know that you don't expect rent. If it's um, the one that is rented, we know how many people are there and we will be able to come to you. And using that same application, we can actually zoom in and use the Google map to come straight to the house. And so it's something that we have implemented. Last year in October, we did a lot of um, pilot testing in the Tema area, and it worked well. And therefore, we are deploying it from the second quarter. And therefore, we want to urge people that you don't have to wait because if you wait and we come, you might end up not just paying the rent tax that you are supposed to pay, but you also have penalties and interest. Let's say, for example, I come in uh, but December. But it's not fair to apply this retrospective uh, <laughs> retroactively. If it's a new thing that you're doing, I guess give everyone a clean slate and then you implement. Yeah, Jifa, the compliance is new. I mean, the effort, when I want to say compliance is new. The method that we are using to ensure compliance is new. But the tax itself and the fact that you have to pay is not new. And so if you have not paid and now we are going to use a compliance method to make sure that, I mean, the approach that we are going to use to make sure that we can find you. So I'm using this opportunity that you have given me to urge people that if you have been able to dodge in the past, this year, the way we are going about it, you will not be able to dodge. And if you don't bring it, and we start our compliance, and we come, let's say, to your house in, say, September, we find out that you collected the rent in um, January. In that case, then you have to now start calculating. So it's better you have to be, and we encourage voluntary um, Voluntary com compliance. compliance. People should uh -huh. come to the so office and deal with that. Thank you for bringing out the issue about um, property. I want to assure Ghanaians that this year, property tax is one of the tax types that we'll do a lot of compliance on to ensure mm. people are paying. That, that's a nice way for us to transition into the next issue. 
uh, about how dig digitization can work for us. One of the things the president talked about in his State of the Nation address is the transitioning of Ghana card numbers becoming SNIT numbers and then also you know how the GRE is involved in these mm. transitions. Um, yes, the, we actually as GRE are doing a lot on the digitalization front and I must say that there are a number of things that we are doing in terms of ability to file, your ability to pay. In fact, um, previously you can only pay um, custom duties uh, from uh, in two banks. Today, you can pay your custom duties through almost all the banks. And you don't you need to also to pay fiscal cash. You can pay using all the methods through the Ghana.gov. As, as I sit here today, we have just implemented the same thing for the domestic tax. And so we also from, uh, we start also actually paying all the domestic tax also through all the banks. So one key thing for us is in all these things that we are talking about, the base of the registered taxpayer is key. And therefore, if you don't have um, a large number of registered taxpayers, then it's difficult for you to use a particular um, ID to identify the person. Today, in 2019, we had about um, 1.5 million registered taxpayers. taxpayers. In 20, no, 2018, sorry, 2018. And then in 2019, we increased it to about 3 million taxpayers when we started our aggressive um, campaign to enroll. In 2020, by the end of 2020, uh, through the, um, the COVID alleviation program and also working with the NIA, at that time not using their card, but trying to work with them wherever they go whilst they are registering their NIA card, they were also doing the registration for the thing. To that, we're also able to increase the numbers from 3 million to 5.9 million, which is almost 6 million. So you see that in one year we doubled the number of taxpayers. Now, what is happening today is that we are going to use the Ghana card, which already ha has um, almost about 14 million registered uh, uh, Ghana card, yes. to be able to get all those who are above 18 to automatically also uh, obtain the uh, 10. And that's why we are saying that now your Ghana card is going to become your tax mm. identification number. All right. So it means anybody who has um, a Ghana card number today, that number will become their TIN number? Yes. What about those of us who may have had a TIN number previously? Okay, so we are doing a, a linking. Now, for today, if you don't have a TIN and you don't have a, a Ghana card, you can walk into, we, uh, we started with 14, and we are adding um, 14 of our offices, and we are adding onto them. And we are making sure that before end of um, April, we'll have about 63 offices that will be doing that. In addition, the NIA is also doing the registration wherever they are. Now, if you don't have a TIN or you don't have a Ghana card, if you come and you do your Ghana card, it automatically now becomes your TIN. So once you get the Ghana card, you have a TIN. Okay. So that's one set of people. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a Ghana card, but you don't have a TIN. Mm -hmm. If you come to our offices today, we use that Ghana card to link it up and make sure that it becomes a thing as well for you if you have taken, you had your Ghana card already. already. And then if you have your tin and you have a Ghana card, like somebody like me, I have a tin which I have done, then I also have a Ghana card. We also have, in fact, we have even created um, a portal which is self-service on our uh, website. You can go there, just click, and on your own, you link the two. So that's something anybody who can do today? Today, okay. yes. There's a link there. If you go to there, you can do it. All right. If you also cannot go into the internet and you come to our offices, we'll do it for you. For 2021, what is the um, taxpayer base figure you are looking at now? Because if 2020 is 5.9, 2021 would be what? Twenty now we expect that we should be able to double it again. To, around so for, 12 to, to about million. 12 million. Yes. yes, yes. So currently you are working together with the NIA? Yes, we are working together with NIA. So what we have done is that we've done what we call the co-location. So in our offices today, that the 14 offices I mentioned, we have the NIA officers in there with all their um, uh, equipment. And then what is required is that you have to follow the same requirements that you need to be able to get an NIA card. They have the commission for homes at the center where if you get the, um, they have various conditions. 
either uh, your relative or somebody who knows you and who also already has registered for Ghana card, then he can then verify. Uh, that's for somebody who doesn't have all the, the details. The you details. need somebody to uh, guarantee for you. Exactly. There's a commission uh -huh. of codes available to so do that. So that's also has been done. So that okay. process is there. And you will be, to be able to get your Ghana card done for you. And automatically it becomes uh, do the process. So this whole you. process ends when? I mean, obviously it's a project. How long will it last? Um, in fact, we, we, it's going to become an integrated system. So once it becomes an integrated system, then going forward, when you walk into any Guinea office or you walk into any NIA area, you say you want to do a Ghana card, it means that you're automatically also doing uh, your a thing. Team. But what we have done is that for this year up to the end of um, 2021, we are going to allow the two cards to uh, operate uh, parallel. In other words, you can still use your TIN if you haven't come to our offices to link it mm -hmm. and you have your TIN and you want to assess or identify your information on, uh, you can still use your TIN. If you also have done your Ghana card and it has come back, you can still use it. But after December 31st, 2001, we will insist that you only come with a Ghana card, which also is your TIN as at the time. Now, away from the project, being a tax man in COVID times uh, must be very challenging. As of last year, I understand that more, at least the documented figure is some 42,000 people lost their jobs. I dare say it's more. So getting individuals and businesses who also suffered due to COVID to pay their taxes must be very challenging. Government recently, as part of the Obatan Park project, announced some reliefs for individuals and businesses. How does that then impact you in your attempt to meet the 60 billion figure? Are you helping people to ensure that they benefit from, from these reliefs? I've heard people, some say that they didn't enjoy any of the reliefs that were provided. I think they, from, um, from last year, we, uh, there were some reliefs that were, were announced and I know a lot of people enjoyed it. For example, um, so to answer your question, there's a balance. We do know that there are people who have suffered and therefore the government is sensitive and for that matter we are all sensitive to ensuring that there is some sort of relief that come to those who have suffered. But at the same time, we also know that there are some people who have also benefited and therefore we ensure that we can get more from those who have benefited. So at the end of the day, um, the government can get the revenue to meet the expenditure that is increasing as a result of the same pandemic. So you will find out that, for example, last year, you have, you are, as you are aware, for those in the uh, medical um, uh, sector, uh, most of them were, in fact, all of them were supposed to enjoy the uh, waiver of the POI um, on their income. That's it. And I can assure you that a lot of applications came through. We uh, normally will go through the other, the, um, Cultural Canada General for the Public Service and for and all to the Ministry of um, Health. And then once they certify and it comes, all those people got their waivers mm -hmm. for all the time that um, it was allowed. But what about people in the informal sector? I keep hearing the creative arts industry complaining that it didn't benefit in, in the kind of way that you know they should have. And they seem to have been most affected because hotels were closed, their, their setups were closed, events people couldn't operate. If anyone has a complaint, can they come to the Commissioner General okay. for, for relief? You, you know that um, for some of these areas, the tax is based upon your revenue or your income. So once the incomes are not coming, then automatically your tax becomes lower. So for last year, most of the people, that would have, would have happened because, uh, for example, and it's important that for you as a taxpayer, you do the compliance exercise and also engage with your taxpayer. Let's say, for example, you lay off your workers. It is important that you write and tell um, your uh, office that, oh, I've laid off um, these 20 workers, so you don't expect that you receive a return on them. So that at the time when you don't lay off, then you, you go quiet, and then after some six months, the taxpayer comes, and then the son says, ah, so why haven't I seen paying for this? Oh, these people, they have gone home, those sort of things. So it's important that you engage the taxpayer. Now, come 2021, uh, the government have also gone to the uh, further, um, in another extent, and as you may be aware, for those in the hospitality industry that were, have been affected seriously, 
the tax, um, corporate tax uh, percentage has also been reduced for them so that they will be able to be compensated for the, um, the service that they went through. You are also aware that in the, this new budget that was read and just we are waiting for the um, president assent to the new amendment for people, um, the trotters. Yes, and the, the commercial and, drivers, they yes, also get The vehicle some income tax yes. that they used to pay, we have um, suspended it from this quarter up to the end of the year and it depends on what happens at the end of the year so that those who are paying the vehicle income tax are no longer going to pay. W would you say that your officers will be going around to make people aware or people just have to, to know? You no, know, we are going to make a lot of... Uh, in fact, what we are waiting for is the they finalizing of the... Uh, okay. and once that is done, um, our team will do a lot of um, campaign. In fact, they've already started putting together the brochures and the communication plan. So it's just a matter of once the whistle is blown, we will start um, educating people. Oh. Because, for example, some of the things that we are going to benefit, um, you have to be, let's say, for example, you have not registered as a taxpayer. You will not be able to benefit, so you have to go and register as a taxpayer just to register, and then you will benefit from those. Uh, we'll be wrapping up soon, but before we go, um, in relation to ways the GRA can mop up revenue, you mentioned um, leakages, gaps in, in areas like the uh, petroleum areas and all that. There was a, a group called the Movement for Truth and Accountability. They say that they wrote to the GRA and the Financial Intelligence Unit last year, August um, and December 2020, to alert you of certain companies. They mentioned 1,200, that's a lot of companies, allegedly involved in money laundering, under invoicing, tax evasion, um, they acknowledge that you replied them, but they are yet to hear any result or action on any of these companies. First, did you identify 1,200 people, 1,200 companies, or it's less? Yeah, actually, it's even more than what they had. Um, let me say that uh, we have started this exercise even before um, we were engaged by this um, uh, group. group. Uh, and with this exercise we started, it started when we had um, identified that what we call the, uh, the IDF, um, when you say uh, import declaration forms, yes. what happens is that if you want to import commodities, I mean, anything at all, you go to your bank, you apply for foreign exchange allocation, and you fill the necessary forms, and these are not part of our job. And then at the end of the day, you go to central bank, the central bank approves, and then you are allocated. Um, uh, the specific amount that you exactly. applied for. So what we noticed was that um, people had, say, allocated $100,000 to import particular commodities. But then when it comes to customs, when the, those same goods has arrived, it's, it may be reported as 20,000. 20, mm -hmm. So how come that, one, the person uh, said the, the goods are worth, or it's worth um, 100000 but then when it arrived, it became 20000 but because there's no linkage of the commercial bank's data to the central bank data to the, um, the revenue, the revenue authority, authority data, then people are able to do this. And that's why when you talked about the digital era, it's very, very important because we should be able to create such a link. So what we you have- You have the link now? It's being worked on now. Mm -hmm. And so what we have done, but now that we, we see what we see, now we are doing it manually. Okay. And that is why the exercise that has ongoing has taken a bit of time. Because we found out that there were more than, um, about more than 2,000... Uh, uh, more than 2,000 companies and individuals in, in, involved, involved in this. All right. The but transactions were more than uh, 10,000 transactions. There were total uh, disinvolved in terms of the amount, but not in terms of the tax, because the tax would be vary. It was about, was about 1.8 billion. Um, dollars or CDs? 1.8 billion uh, dollars. Um, and this... Where, so we now have to now engage with these uh, companies and, and then to identify, so to see w w the differences and then the person to explain. So uh, you're saying that it's, it's not just about swooping in and arresting people, so to speak. You need to engage them first. Exactly. How many have you engaged so far, sir? It should be in the region of about 400 or so. Okay. And we are still engaging them. In fact, we have a team working um, with us from GRA, from FIC, 
from the central bank and from the commercial banks as well. Mm -hmm. And so it is a complete, um, and we are working on it. And definitely, we will collect every peswa. I can assure you. All right. So if they are committing these various financial um, crimes under invoicing, tax evasion, isn't there a legal process that they should be taken through? I understand that you like to collect your money, and that is fine. But we should collect the money and then hold them to account using the legal process. Uh, is that on the cards? It's on the, uh, yes, I agree 100%. And you have hit the nail right on the head. And that is one thing that we are started this year. Last year, we have already approached the uh, Chief Justice and he, we are working with him. We are going to get task courts, which will be specifically for um, tax. And again, we have um, we've had support from the um, DFID and we have trained all our officers on how to submit data that can be used for prosecution. And we have actually done an advert for employing more um, prosecutors and therefore, we as GRA are going to have, have having prosecutors. We are currently doing the, the uh, appointment. And therefore, for offenders, we are not just going to collect the revenue. We are also going to prosecute uh, tax offenders. Will we see any of that this year at all? We will see a uh, lot this year, I can assure you. Right. Uh, and, and, so, and what would you like to tell this group, uh, Movement for Truth and Accountability? We, we appreciate their um, uh, contribution and their effort to put um, GRA and for that matter, everybody on its toes. And therefore, I mean, as far as, as far as the authority is concerned, any informant, anybody who is interested in making sure that we get more revenue, we don't have a problem. Um, and we were working on it, and we will make sure that we will get to the bottom of it and collect all the taxes. All right, so um, Commissioner General, um, before I let you go, any final words to all of us as individuals and, of course, looking at your projections for 2021. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jifa. Um, I want to just to encourage um, every Ghanaian citizen, or for that matter, every resident who is supposed to pay tax, that uh, as a nation, we ought to be able to increase our tax to GDP ratio. And it's important for all of us to be voluntary compliant. But we can also assure that if they are not voluntary compliant, we are determined to ensure that whatever method that we have to take, which is within the laws, to ensure that people are compliant, we will take it. And there will be a lot of enforcement action. We will also aim at making sure that the tax payment effort, it becomes um, more friendly, when I say more, more convenient. Yes, I, I know people have said that um, with the GRA, they're, they're not open to new things. They still have to come and push paper. They still have to fill long forms. They can't do this online. It, it affects them. Yeah. So we are determined that we are focusing more on our customer experience and therefore want to be sure that the customer experience is improved. We are actually even conducting a customer satisfaction service among our department to ensure that the customer is satisfied. And then we are bringing in, making things easier, like I said, in terms of being able to pay from your office rather than having to walk to go and queue. Our aim is that we want to make the GRA cashless. Today, we have uh, tellers in our offices. It's not our business. Tellery is the banking business. Ours is tax. So once we have them able to get a tax, the uh, taxpayer should be able to pay through every, and uh, not we employing tellers. So that's also another thing that we are working on. And also before the year comes to an end, we will have eliminated the tellers and make sure that you can pay from anywhere. So we are making it convenient for the taxpayer. But at the same time, we are also en encouraging for compliance and we use voluntary compliance, but we also want to say that if you don't do voluntary compliance, we will enforce, and then we'll make sure that we digitize as much as possible to make sure that we get the revenue. The, tax for, the task for us to achieve our tax revenue this year is quite huge, and we want to, but we are determined to get there, and therefore we want to count on everyone to also work with us to ensure that we get there. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend uh, Amisha Dai Amwa. Thank you for receiving us, Commissioner General. Thank you very much, Jiva It's a pleasure.